of this place called this place called the Art Space. This building was sitting here unused, and we thought maybe it could be something that would contribute to the neighborhood. Instead of having taggers all the time, we asked people to come and put up paintings on the walls. We asked the Gladstone Market if they wanted to cover their graffiti with paint, and um, so we had the paint to do it, and she would just do it for free. And so she painted all three of those murals in like four hours. And I had been talking to my owner about putting a mural on this wall. And so I went over to him and I said, uh, you know, Craig, if you want, we can have her do a mural on our building right now. In the beginning, it was gonna be like a gallery, an event space, and then we would have studios in it, two screen printers, and then build like the rail yard company from that. And we're just kind of getting started. I mean, we've only been here six months and then everything is like coming down. A few weeks ago, our landlords got a notice that the building had been deemed to be covered with graffiti and that it had to be covered up. Uh, this seemed really <laughs> harsh to us because the building was covered with graffiti until we started letting people do paintings on it. The difference between art and graffiti is permission, provided that there are no local or state laws being violated. You know, just because a building owner gives permission does not mean that that's all there is to it. There still has to be a permit. There's so many rules around. You know, I don't think these rules have to be around the artists. 23rd or the 24th is when Matt Miller came down here and gave, and gave Fraser the letter, uh, Mike the co-curator for, for the spot. The letter said essentially that we had 10 days to either appeal it or get it removed. The letter was filed on the 20th and then we got it on the 23rd or 24th, but Marsha Dennis had like six days off. So like six of those 10 days she was off of work and we couldn't get, we couldn't get in touch with her. It was hard to find out about the appeal process without being able to talk to the actual coordinator of the department. She's pretty aggressive to us. She felt like we had artists represented on the studio that um, she knew were also taggers. I don't use the term graffiti artist, by the way. If it's graffiti, it's vandalism. We hosted one graffiti-based art show, Endless Canvas, and because of that, we're like the biggest graffiti people in Portland. We had to be shut down. There's a bit of history behind this. In Portland, you used to be able to pretty much paint on anything that you had authorization from the owners to paint on. Portland is having such a big, huge issue with all of this is because of the controversy with Clear Channel years ago in like 98. Clear Channel came in and they said, hey, we're, we have the rights of people too. Um, we're a big corporation. And we want to put up a lot of billboards to express ourselves. Apparently the Clear Channel sued the city of Portland as to what a definition of a mural or what a sign was or how many square feet it could be. Anything that looks discriminatory towards a corporation can be appealed or um, fought in court. So they just outlawed all, all murals so they could enact the sign code that also outlaw all billboards. The mural is, this mural is just such a small part of it. And I mean, it's just sad because it's, it just shows that we're, we're not headed, it's not headed in a very good direction, especially in a city like this if, in Portland, if we're so creative, I mean, and, it's, and this is how we're being controlled, I mean, it's scary. Okay, I don't see how it's even constitutional that we should have to pay $250 per mural. I mean, there was, there's, there was graffiti on that building for years. This building gets hit all the time, and now we've, we've removed that graffiti and put art, beautiful artwork where, you know, it was, so. I mean, this, the city didn't have to do that. They didn't have to pay any money. We, we provided the paint, we provided the artist. It was our time. It would have essentially cost us, if we wanted to do this, $1,000 if we'd gone to the city permit system. What's the definition, like, mural and paint? Like, what if I just painted stripes? I can do that, it's not a mural, but, uh, you know, how many, how many stripes makes a mural? And so it's, that, that fine line isn't really defined. It's a different area when you're going from murals to graffiti, because graffiti, Graffiti itself is an illegal form of artwork that's done without anyone's permission. The murals, on the other hand, are a different story. We're trying to get away from the illegal aspect and we're trying to get away from the, the advertising aspect. So I would say graffiti is, 
destruction of public property that are, you know, I mean, we've had permission to do this. The art on the front of the building is really well appreciated by a lot of people who live on the street. Um, our neighbor across the street who looks at it every day is actually rabidly um, fond of it. And um, fortunately, I think she she got hung up on by the city when she called to complain about the graffiti determination because she was so, so strong about it even after I encouraged her to look at it from their perspective. Graffiti has nothing to do with art. The motivation behind graffiti is fame and notoriety. Doing it with spray paint, doing it on a wall, doing it on cement doesn't determine if you're an artist or not. It's whether or not you have the love for what you do for the art form. The mural project was basically just to help with graffiti abatement. Like, to keep people from fucking marking on people's walls. The very beginning came about because um, as I was covering up the graffiti and, and tag marks on this building, I started doing it in kind of more creative ways. I'd rather see like a bunch of tropical fish painted on the side of a wall than a buff, a, a buff mark, you know? I own this building. I can't paint murals on the outside with, without paying the city money, uh, thousands of dollars just to get a permit. Everything runs on money. And they're not, the city's not making any money off us, clearly, because we're not paying them, but Clear Channel will, because they obviously can afford to. To get a grant or that money waived, I have to have a 10-person jury tell me if my art's relevant. They say, okay, you know what, you are a really good artist, but no, I don't like this one. There is the rack process, where there is a design review, and there are a bunch of other uh, qualified artists, good conscience, and all these things, but they stop when they have all this, all this process around. No? We also have Title IV, which was a community mural ordinance that was passed and adopted in 2009. The intent was to make it more accessible because it didn't require a design review. What you have to do if you wanted this whole, through the city at least, draw schematics of your building, send them the piece with, you know, on the building with your drawing, and then you have to go outside and put a note on the wall for 21 days to notify the community. And then I guess they can approve or deny it and you pay your money. And so, I mean, it would probably take a month. I don't know. We, don't, we didn't have a month. Jules was here for 36 hours. You know what I mean? She painted like 12 pieces in 36 hours. She didn't hardly sleep. You know, artistic expression sometimes it just comes quickly and sometimes it's only available for a short while. If it's supposed to be a mural, there has to be a permit. Art space is, is pretty much fully zoned residential. We can't get the standard permit for this building. We cannot get a permit for residential property under five units. It seems like that that's where freedom of expression really lies, that you know, when you're on residence you should be able to have it look pretty much however you want. It's kind of ironic that in order to stop commercial entities from exercising their supposed First Amendment rights to free speech, um, murals got shut down in Portland. But now you can get one of those mural permits if you have a commercial business. Um, that you want to put it on, but not if you're a residential building of less than five units. We got like notices saying that we need to paint over these murals because they were done without permission, but it's like private property on the inside of the building. And yeah, and then that was their reasoning on evicting us. It's legal to paint the interior. It's completely legal. As soon as you go to the outside, it gets into the gray areas. Like, uh, are we responsible for for anything that, you know, that this artist has done in the history of his life? Because we let him do something that was legal, now we're responsible for all of it. This is the law that they're trying to charge us with, which is called time, place, means. They use the example that if somebody walks into a bar, um, has a drink, that somebody can sue the bar. Because the bar hosted the alcohol. So they're saying if we have a, a show that is street art inspired, then um, any street artists that come in here go out and do street art, it's our fault. First Saturday of July, um, Anthony Zanetti and the traffic cop came by here and harassed me personally. At that point I was like kind of fed up with it because I live in the neighborhood, you know, we're, we're this is our this is our neighborhood, not, the, not his, not the police's neighborhood. 
they told me the night of the show that their mission is going to get me evicted. And since then, they've been like harassing our landlord like weekly, telling her that she's responsible for all the graffiti in the neighborhood. Oh yeah, the, the landlord said uh, the only reason I mean, I'm sorry, the police are making me do this. And then they're like fining her for the graffiti on the roof that's been here for like five years. It's because she's been getting calls saying she's going to get fined. All this made up shit. She can't get fined for us. Like it doesn't. It doesn't even make sense. But we didn't do anything wrong. But the, doesn't mean the cops can't call her and tell her that. Cops contacted us about like some our mural project stickers that we had around town, and then like contacted us about gats and some other people that I got up. He was like, you need to come There's talk to us here. about There's this. And then we tried to contact them about it and they wouldn't respond. And then they came in on Monday with our landlord evicting us. We've lost everything. We have no money. Um, we've, we're gonna try and, uh, we've contacted the ACLU because our civil rights have definitely been violated um, by the Portland Police Department. I was just on the phone with Cop Watch. Um, so we're, ACLU is gonna review the case. Hopefully they can do something for us. I don't know. We're gonna try and have some kind of art fundraiser to um, make some money to hire a lawyer. I mean, we've, we've already lost like $6,000 by getting evicted. These are two operating businesses, uh, my construction company. Like, is, everybody is, is we're done, like, done. We don't have anywhere to go. You know? It's like, so much money is lost because because the because the graffiti hit squad didn't like the sh didn't like the art in the art show. I think it's it's not working in the right way. I think it's it's oppressing the artists. No? The vision of the mural district would be is basically a bunch of murals that are regulated. The fly in artists from around the world, give them paint and a canvas, and create something beautiful for the city of Portland. And then for there to be a massive free wall. We are not in favor of free walls. They do not reduce graffiti. People who do free walls are most often taggers, and they, they keep tagging. They keep doing graffiti vandalism while they want to be known as artists. Graffiti means vandalism. Graffiti means drugs. Graffiti means bad things, no? But no, it's not really, you know, where the city where I come from, I start, like, when I start painting with graffiti before this, no? But yeah, we're trying to organize the local community to see if there's something we can do to take things to another level. My own personal opinion, obviously, would have no nothing to do with the city. There'd be no one to even regulate it. It'd be up to the people that live there, and you know what I mean. But yeah, there definitely, I mean, definitely needs to be a new mural permit or a new some type of permit process to allow murals to be changed every six months. Um, getting a permit that is maybe applicable to residential spaces, maybe fluid for change, because we'd like to have some kind of display here that could showcase local talent that changes on a regular basis. Personally, I don't feel like the city should have anything to do with it, unless we're getting it on the sidewalk, on the street, or anything else. I think that we actually represent an alternative process for the city to consider. Just the amount of money they wasted on us, I can't even imagine. Yeah, there's there's like, like 12 like cops out there, that's salaries. Make spaces in galleries and different venues for people to expose their art so that they don't always have to do it on the street. You know what I mean? I think it's good to put it on the street because it's free to everyone, but people try to make a living off of it too. So if you gave people spaces to expose their art, to make a living, to bring in other artists who are, are not well known, um, to actually, you know, feel like they're a part of something, part of the community instead of always demeaning them, then, you know, then you, we can actually, you know, I think, get at the problem, you know what I mean? Because the problem isn't graffiti. The problem isn't the art form itself. The problem is the community and how they view a certain type of person uh, and, and how they marginalize a certain type of person. So I think, you know, the powers that be, the politicians and everybody else that works for the city should think about that, you know what I mean?